Hey guys, Kritika here, and although there have been national authorities and toxicology studies telling us that Splenda is safe and well tolerated, there's been understandable controversy about things like, can it affect our gut microbiome negatively? Can it ultimately lead to weight gain or increase our blood sugar? And are there any side effects? How much is too much? The truth is there's been so much research trying to answer all of these questions and some studies bring out pretty conflicting results. By the way, if you're new, hit that subscribe button because this is gonna be part one in my series on artificial and natural sweeteners and you definitely don't wanna miss my upcoming videos. But first of all, why should you even trust me when it comes to this information? When I was getting my master's in nutrition, I really learned to critically analyze research studies. So that's why today I'm super excited to dive right into the research and finally answer these questions for you, including is Splendid or sucralose really safe for us? But more importantly, is it better to consume Splenda or sucralose than regular sugar? As a quick disclaimer, this video is meant more for educational purposes and is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice. If you need to see a dietitian, I would highly recommend it. So stay tuned for all of this and more coming up right now. Hold on me. some basics about Splenda. It tastes much sweeter to us than regular sugar, therefore you need a lot less of it to get that same sweet taste. The components of Splenda are sucralose, dextrose, and maltodextrin. And Splenda passes through our body mostly unabsorbed, which is why it can be called calorie free and sugar free. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but some peanut butters are labeled as trans fat free or show that they have zero grams of trans fat on the label. But when you take a close look at the ingredients, you'll see hydrogenated oils, which have trans fats in them but legally they're allowed to say that they are trans fat free. Comment boss below if you already learned something new in this video. There's also an established ADI, which is the acceptable daily intake of Splenda, up to which causes no health effects. ADI is the amount that can be ingested daily over a lifetime without any risk to our health. This is measured based on our body weight. And for sucralose, it's about five milligrams per kilogram of our body weight consumed every single day for the rest of our lives, with no health effects. So if you weigh about 150 pounds or 68 kilos, that equates to about 340 milligrams of sucralose, about nine diet colas a day, or more than 28 packets of sucralose. And sucralose has actually been found to be safe at 100 times that amount. So I really don't have any idea where the myth came from that Splenda is unsafe, but I have one theory. Some people tend to be afraid of things that they don't understand, and understanding that sugar comes from sugar beets is so much more simple than understanding how Splenda is made. So this is why the rest of this video is gonna be dedicated on showing you all the research on Splenda and answering all those questions I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Splenda raise our blood sugar? Well, first of all, if you remember, I mentioned that it's about one gram of sugar per packet because it does have dextrose in it. You can imagine if you consumed like 20 packets of Splenda a day, that would be like almost 20 grams of sugar, which definitely can spike your blood sugar. But I think if you're consuming that much Splenda a day, we have other problems we need to talk about. But let's look at some research on if large amounts of sucralose can affect our blood sugar. So one study took seven healthy volunteers, BMI normal, about in their mid-20s, and they were all given intragastric infusions of high doses of sucralose, 50 grams, 80 grams, and 800 grams. It's also a group that was just given saline. Researchers took samples of all of these participants' blood over 240 minutes for four days. The researchers found that blood sugar, GLP-1, GIP, and insulin pretty much for all the same in all of the groups. Well, they were the same in all of the groups. Keep in mind, these were very, very high doses of sucralose. Let's look at another study. So there was a randomized double-blind placebo control trial done in 2014, and this was really interesting because they looked at sugar-free jams. You know, when you go to the grocery store, it should be right next to like in the jam section, you'll find some sugar-free jams that have sucralose in it. The subjects were divided into multiple groups. Some were given the sucralose jam, some were just given regular like sugary jam. And this study tested blood sugar, insulin, and appetite, but we're gonna talk more about appetite later in this video. Blood sugar and appetite did not change in the sucralose groups. The strongest evidence to date does not show an effect on sucralose and our blood sugar. And also that there's no risk of developing type 2 diabetes with consuming sucralose. So does Splenda or sucralose affect our appetite? So I talked earlier about that jam study that showed that there was no effect on our appetite when consuming very high amount of sucralose in those sugar-free jams. But let's look at a few other studies. By the way, all these studies are linked below. 
In one study, there were eight subjects that were given about one gram of sucralose. And they found that sucralose did not increase their insulin, their GLP-1, or their PYY. PYY is a hormone that affects our appetite. The subjects were also given a meal after having the sucralose on an empty stomach and did not find any change in appetite there con compared to placebo. In this 2016 review by Romo Romo, I thought it was really interesting when I looked at all of the studies that they reviewed, there was not one single study that looked at sucralose and appetite that showed any effect on our appetite when consuming sucralose. does sucralose or Splenda cause weight gain or lead to obesity? There was a really amazing randomized control trial done in 2015 that was so well done by Campos et al. And the span of the study was 16 weeks. It basically took 31 healthy subjects, some of which consumed like sugary beverages like sweet tea and Kool-Aid, some of which consumed artificially sweetened beverages. They let them continue that for four weeks and then they divided them into two different groups. Thing that this study was testing was the IHCL, which is intrahepatic lipid concentration. What's really interesting is that the subjects that were in the artificially sweetened beverage group, they had significantly lower levels of IHCL at the end of the study. That study was huge because it showed that subbing sodas and sugary beverages with artificial sweeteners actually lowered their hepatic fat. Also, I want to note this study was a mix of sucralose and other artificial sweeteners. There's another randomized control trial done in 2019 looking at 150 participants. The BMIs here varied widely, anywhere from 25 to 40. This study, the more you weighed, the more sugar or artificial sweetener you were given to consume. Participants in the sugar group were given 100, 120, and 140 grams of sugar or sucrose. In the artificially sweetened group, the participants were given 0.16 grams of sucralose because it falls within the ADI and matches the intensity level of sugar. Weight was negative and lower for the sucralose group compared with other artificial and natural sweeteners, but the results were not statistically significant. And most of these RCTs that were done concluded that replacing sugary beverages with the artificially sweeteners actually cause a neutral effect or decrease body weight. And we can still see those observational studies that show that those who are overweight and obese tend to consume more artificial sweetener. The reason that we might be seeing this in observational studies is because sometimes it might be the participants that are prone to developing these metabolic diseases are consuming non-nutritive sweeteners or artificial sweeteners like sucralose. Another limitation of observational research is that when you take two different groups and you say that, okay, so this group did not consume artificial sweeteners and this group does consume artificial sweeteners, they could be in protein powders, in jams, in so many other foods. And so the group that's saying that, no, I don't consume any artificial sweeteners, they could be unknowingly consuming those artificial sweeteners without knowing it. We may think that we're being so much healthier by consuming Splenda or artificial sweeteners in place of sugar that we compensate for it by saying, oh, you know what, I'm going to have um, more fries or I'm going to have a larger dinner. But that can tend to usually backfire on us because the amount of calories that we're compensating with is far outweighing the amount of calories that we saved. One review article from 2019 examined a bunch of randomized control trials assessing this question. What this review article found is that giving doses up to 15 milligrams of sucralose per kilogram affected the number of clostridium in mice, also decreased the number of bifidobacteria, lactob lactobacilli, bacteriodes, and clostridium. But some questions I had when looking at this study were, one, are we ever really gonna consume that much sucralose? And two, this was a rodent study, which we'll get into limitations of that soon. Before we do that, let's look at another study that found pretty similar results. A study that done by Suez et al. showed that when rodents were given artificial sweeteners that contained aspartame, changes in their gut microbiome. But a lot of people had issues with this study. One controversy about the study is that the human component of the study was done on saccharin, not on sucralose. And the craziest thing about this was that the media took this study and generalized it to all artificial sweeteners. So we're all here thinking, oh, all artificial sweeteners affect our gut microbiome. And throughout the study, diet wasn't actually controlled for. So we don't actually know what these participants were eating. What else did they consume? Because we know diet plays a huge, huge role in our gut microbiome. 
So it was re really hard to take the results of the study and make any definitive conclusions. So as you can see with the gut microbiome, we don't have as clear of an answer as does Splenda or Sucralose affect it in a negative way than we do on all of the other questions. And it's also such a new er area of research and there's definitely a need to perform more randomized control trials that where humans are given adequate doses of what we would actually consume and where diet is controlled for, as well as any other potential impacts on our gut microbiome. Why can't we extrapolate rodent studies to human studies? Even though rodents have a close genetic link to us, there are many differences like the structure of organs, how they work, how drugs are absorbed. Also as humans, we have so many lifestyle factors that we can't replicate in rodent studies. So we need to be cautious in taking theories from animal research and applying them to human clinical practice. So lastly, let's talk about does sucralose cause headaches? There have been three case reports regarding this topic. Each case report involved one female subject. But unfortunately, we can't really draw any scientific conclusions from case reports with only one subject. So I think this doctor says it best. We can't really come to any definitive conclusions based on just these three case reports, since there's been so many research studies and safety studies showing that there hasn't been any effect on sucralose in very high doses in proper randomized control trials. In addition, each of these single patient observations, there are confounders like taste or ingestion of other food products, which should give pause to anyone trying to draw a conclusion from that. Again, these case reports do not show cause and effect. We can't say that the sucralose caused the headaches. It could have been so many other things. Just as an example, there's so many other causes of headaches and I'm just gonna list some of them here. So in summary, does sucralose or Splenda cause weight gain, insulin resistance, increase our appetite, cause obesity? The answer is clearly no. Aww. But remember, we shouldn't be consuming more than the ADI. But I wanna encourage you not to be scared of things you don't understand and instead do proper research. Look at what the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics are saying, what the FDA is saying, what the National Cancer Institute is saying, what the American Diabetes Association says and to see a dietitian for your individual case. In conclusion, sucralose or Splenda can be helpful, especially for those having a hard time cutting out sugar and for diabetics. But remember, one gram of sugar per packet. So if you're consuming 20 packets a day, you might wanna reduce that because that is gonna spike your blood sugar. There's been hundreds of safety studies showing that it's even safe for children, for adolescents, for those who are pregnant, those who are breastfeeding. We haven't seen any side effects in the research as long as you're not consuming over the ADI. There is no conspiracy and this is not my opinion, this is just based on all of the research. Unless we find out any negative health effects of consuming Splenda or Sucralose, I'm going to continue to recommend it to my clients who are curious about it and who are interested in it and who could benefit from it. Because if I can get someone to go from two or three sugary lemonades a day to just two or three packets of Splenda a day, that's gonna really help lower their blood sugar, may help them lose weight, prevent dental caries, and also might make them feel less deprived. By the way, if you haven't checked out my sugar video where I talk about this in detail, you can definitely click above to check that out. So stay tuned because I have so many more videos coming out on aspartame, saccharin, stevia. Let me know which one you would want to see next. And feel free to follow me on Instagram at UncommonRD. Give this video a like if you liked it and please subscribe to my channel, share this video if it was helpful, and I will see you guys very soon in my next one.